Here I have a nice blue flame from our Bunsen burner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure six centimeters and put my finger near the flame, six centimeters away from the flame. As I was doing this, my finger felt warm, but not hot. Now what I'm going to get is a steel rod, and I'm going to measure it six centimeters from the end, and I'm going to hold this steel rod in the flame. Bowser's that's hot. Here I have an ordinary Dixie cup. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take some water and fill it a little more than half full of water or half empty, depending upon your life's view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our Dixie cup that has a uh, half full of water and I'm going to place it into the flame, like on the top of the flame. I intentionally chose not to cut out this section and speed up the process because I wanted you to understand how long I was holding the Dixie cup in the flame. And remember, this Dixie cup has water in it. For good measure, I decided to put it back in there to see if I can get it to where it would actually catch on fire. Now I'm going to take some paper, just regular old sheets of paper I cut up into little squares, and I'm going to put them onto a piece of what is called wire gauze. And I'm going to place this in the flame. Didn't take long to burn these pieces of paper, did it? So here I have a nice blue flame again, and I'm going to measure approximately 20 centimeters above the flame. And I'm going to place this little spiral device. Now notice what happens when I remove it from the flame. 
It's spinning the opposite direction because my string was wound up. So I want you to notice that the air temperature is pretty reasonable at 20.5 degrees Celsius, but at approximately 20 centimeters above the flame, you can see that it gets much, much warmer. It's a little hard to see, but it's getting up well past 31, now 32 degrees Celsius, to 33. It settles down around 34.1 to 34.2 degrees Celsius. What I have here is a radiometer. And in a moment, you're going to see that I'm going to adjust it so that the radiometer is about 10 centimeters away from the light that I have there. Oh, what? I intentionally left this so that we would see this in real time, ladies and gentlemen, so you can see how fast the radiometer little flaps are spinning. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust it so that the light source is now 20 centimeters away from the radiometer. Again, I wanted to make sure that this was in real time so you could see a difference between the light source being at 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I have a very large 2,000 milliliter beaker fill of water. It's slightly cooler water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some drops of ordinary blue food coloring into the 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. As you can see in the distance there, I've got myself some wonderful hot boiling water. And then what I'm going to do is put the hot wa boiling water in there and put this stopper that has two glass tubes in it on to the top. I'm a trained professional. Do not try this at home. Placing the boiling water into the Erlenmeyer flask completely to the top. And then what I'm going to do is take my stopper with my two glass tubes and push it down carefully, and then I'm going to submerge the entire Erlenmeyer flask into the large 2,000 milliliter beaker of water.
Why isn't it coming out of the both of the tubes? That didn't make much sense. Do you see color difference? I see a color difference. Do you see a color difference? I see a color difference.